I posted a post on Instagram and I just want to read it real quick so that I can remember what actually it was. The worst thing about having high functioning autism is that you're too weird to be considered normal, but too normal for people to believe you're autistic. And I get that all the time, especially when it comes to my son. A lot of people are like, he don't look autistic. And like, my thing is, my question is, what does someone that looks like autism or that has autism look like? Like, what is a look? There is no look. Like, autism is a disability such as diabetes or high blood pressure. Like, people, there is no look to diabetes and high blood pressure. So, same thing with autism. It doesn't have a look. Now, you can tell in certain behaviors or certain things that they do but there is no overall look. A lot of times I don't tell everyone that my son is autistic, but in some scenarios I'll tell people because it does explain his behaviors when they start to manifest and show themselves. Um, and sometimes it's not really even certain behaviors or maybe the manner in which he responds to someone or the repetitive topics of whatever he feels like talking about at that time, or maybe him not moving or doing things as fast once it's told to him like these are different things that you know we deal with especially as parents of children with high functioning autism or autism period a lot of times it takes them time to process things so in certain scenarios yes i like to let people know but people that are already aware of what autism is they can tell some of the telltale signs so i remember a couple of summers ago i went to like a concert and this is when um, my son was like always playing in dirt and, you know, yes, it wasn't the best thing because of maybe it's dirt. Yeah. But stopping him would cause a major act out. And, but there was a lady in the audience that was like, yeah, is he on a, like, while other parents are like looking at me like, oh my gosh, like, why is he doing that? Um, like there was a, a, a little lady that walked up to me and she was like, does he have autism? And I'm like, yeah. And this was like in the beginning stages at the time where I was still, like learning about it and things like that but yeah stopping him at that time would have caused a huge meltdown you know but um we're better at managing it now but um yeah whether it's um whatever whichever level of the spectrum that the child falls under there is always going to be something and like i said that something does not have a look it's more um it manifests itself more and behaviors or things of that nature. And moms, if you are a mom and you have a newly diagnosed child on the autism spectrum, there's no need to be embarrassed because at the end of the day, this is your child. And as long as you're doing everything in your power to, like as you start to learn more about um, autism itself or your child with autism, because sometimes, you know, as parents, we may leave it up to the school or to the um, service providers and things like that because at home and I'm going to just speak for myself I want to make things as normalized as possible so while I have you know some knowledge you know of what autism is and how it affects your child how it affects you at home I still like to keep in my mind at the end of the day that my child is a child you know it's not my child is a child with autism even though that's the reality of the situation but me being a mom, my child is my child. And as long as I learn the things that I need to know in order to manage my household and his behaviors and things like that as possible, it works. You know, it, it works. And I think the school is doing an excellent job and, you know, and what they're doing. So at home, my child is my child. And just to clarify that last <laughs> statement, like I've gotten to a point now where I know what things to do and not do or what things would cause um, a reaction and what things wouldn't. Even though I can't do everything in my power to stop them from happening, they happen, but I know how to better manage it. And just being a mom of three kids, so one is, you know, he doesn't have autism at all. And then I have another one on a high functioning um, spectrum. And then I have another one that's now going through the early intervention process. So I have a mixture of all kinds of shenanigans <laughs> happening in my home. So it's not for me to say, okay, this is an autistic house or this is this or this is that. It's just managing your children. Because at the end of the day, these are your children, autism or not. Okay, and that's the most important thing to remember. So seasoned autism moms, y'all understand what I'm talking about. But 
for those of you that are new to this process, it's a lot. It's overwhelming. And I'm going to tell you something. It's going to take a while to get to this point. I'm telling you because you're dealing with your emotions. You're dealing with your child meltdowns. You're dealing with trying to get the right services. I understand. And these are the things that I talk about in my upcoming webinar from suspecting to accepting. Getting from that point of when your child is first diagnosed or first starting to go through that process to... Um, you fully accept what's going on and it gets easier. You know, it, 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 of course it's challenging. It's always going to be challenging, but it gets easier. And this is what I help moms do. I help them get through those challenging moments so that they can provide what they need to for their child. So if you're a mom that fits into one of these three categories, one, you just suspect that something is off with your child. You just don't know what it is yet. Or if your child has been diagnosed with autism and you know the process is just new, you're all over the place, you don't even know what to do, how to do it, how to manage your child, how to manage yourself. Or three, someone that just needs that support because I know what it is to have a child diagnosed with autism and you don't have any support to help you on this journey, feel free to join my upcoming webinar from suspecting to accepting. You'd be perfect for it. And tell a friend too.